Hi everyone, Alice Zhao here. I'm a data science instructor for Maven Analytics, and today I want to talk about a mistake that we found in the majority of the submissions for our latest challenge. Our last challenge was the Maven Healthcare Challenge, and we asked you to look into some data on hospitals. So within those hospitals, a lot of patients took surveys, and we wanted you to analyze that survey data. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? But that was not the case. In one of the data sets called Responses, a lot of people made this error. So we're gonna look into the responses data and it looks something like this. So we had release period, state, facility ID, which was the hospital ID, completed surveys and response rate. And a lot of you tried to answer the question, how did the average response rate change over time? But the problem was that the majority of the challenge submissions didn't calculate this accurately. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a spoiler. The key takeaway of this entire video is beware when taking the average of percentages. So a lot of people made this calculation mistake. And I'm gonna walk through what that mistake was and also how to fix it. Okay, so a lot of you were trying to find the average response rate over time. So to do that, you would look at this release period. So I'm gonna do a control shift L to add the filter here. And within here, you can see I have data for all these years. Now you would think to find the average response rate over time that for each of these years, I can take the average of the response rate. So I'm gonna take all this and add it to a pivot table. So I can do insert pivot table, and then I can add that to a new worksheet. So I've already added the pivot table here, and you can see here, if I want to look at the field list, I can go to pivot table analyze field list, and I wanna find the average response rate change over time. So I'm gonna pull in release period for every row, and then I have response rate, so I'm gonna pull that in for my values, and I'm gonna change this count to an average. Okay, so now I have for every year the average response rate, but this is actually the incorrect answer. You can't just take the average of the response rates, and the reason is because every hospital had a different number of respondents. Some of them had, if I go back here, if you look at the completed surveys, some of them had 25 respondents, some of them had 13,000 respondents, and it's not fair to treat those hospitals the same. So if we go back here, basically every hospital had a different number of respondents and we can't treat them all equally, and when we just take a simple average like this, they are treated equally. So instead, we have to take something called a weighted average. So I'm gonna go through this example here to explain what a weighted average is using a simpler example. So I have this pet store example, and our goal is to find what's the average cat percent. Okay, what do I mean by that? So I have three pet stores here, Furry Friends, the Cats Meow, and Petpalooza. And at Furry Friends, they have eight animals that are looking for homes, and there's one cat. At the Cats Meow, they have 200 animals, and 198 of them are cats. And at Petpalooza, they only have three animals, and there are no cats. Now, if we wanted to look at the average cat percent, and we just took a simple unweighted average, then I would wanna take the average of all these. So just to retype this in, I could take average of these. And that would be my unweighted average. But that's really unfair. The cat's meow has way more animals than the other two, and you can see that the other two values are really dragging this cat percentage down. So the right thing to do is to take a weighted average. Now the way to take a weighted average is you multiply the cat percent by the total number of animals. So I'm gonna take that times the total number of animals, and I'm gonna bring that down with a command D. And then from here, I'm going to sum up these weighted calculations and then divide them by the sum of all the animals. And if I do that, then I get 94% cats, which makes a lot more sense, right? Because the cat's meow has 99% cats, and so this really should be closer to the high 90s instead of down here where the other two smaller pet stores were really dragging that percentage down. Okay, so the unweighted average is the simple thing to do, but it's incorrect, whereas the weighted average is a little bit more complex, but it's the correct thing to do. So now let's do that for our data set. So here we have the hospital data. So our goal is to find what's the average response rate. So first, let's do the unweighted average, which is what many of you did. So we have the release period, hospital ID, completed surveys, and response rate. 
So a lot of you just took the average of all these. So let me just show you that again. Just did the average of everything here. Okay, so that's incorrect. If you were to take the weighted average, it's a bit more tricky, so follow along with me. Okay, so with the hospital data, we were given completed surveys and response rate. But with only completed surveys, we don't know the total surveys that were given. And we need to know the total surveys that were given to calculate that weighted average. So we need to calculate the surveys given. Now, how do we do that? Using fractions. So here is a response rate of 27%. So I'm just gonna create a fraction here. So 27% is equivalent to 27 over 100. And that's supposed to be equal to the completed surveys divided by the surveys given. So completed surveys is 786. And then we have to calculate the surveys given. So to do that, we're gonna use fraction math. So if you remember for fraction math, this here needs to be equal to this. And to set those equal, basically 786 times 100 is equal to 27 times our question mark. So these surveys given, if we wanna calculate these surveys given here, then what we need to do is do 100 times 786 divided by 27, and that's gonna give us the surveys given. So that's the calculation I wanna make here. 100 times 786 divided by 27, and that's the total number of surveys given. Now, one thing that you'll notice here is that this value is really large. This is a situation where we're off by 100%. So in this case, I'm just gonna take this value and I'm gonna divide it by 100. And I'm gonna move all those down with a Command D, and those numbers look more accurate to me. So just to confirm, if I had 2911 surveys and I take 27% of that, then you can see it's 785.9, which is that 786 here. Now, the reason I had that huge number here was because my response rate, it really should have been 0.27, but in this case, you can see it was 27%. And so it needed that extra divide by 100 to be 0.27. Okay, so that's how we got all the surveys given. Now let's calculate this weighted value. So to do this, again, I have to multiply the percentage by the weight, which is the surveys given. And then I drag that all the way down and I get these values here. And then in this cell, the calculation I wanna make is I want to sum up all these weight calculations and then divide that by the sum of all the surveys that were given. If I run that, then I get this 25.1% here. And you can see that that's different than this 24.4% here. So most people gave us this calculation over here, but the one on the right is the correct one. So your next question might be, is the answer on the left ever correct? Well, you could technically make that calculation, but you'd have to be very specific in how you presented the results. So you can say, this is the average of the response rates for each hospital, which it is, right? These are all hospitals, everybody's a hospital and you're averaging the response rates, but that doesn't make as much sense intuitively. If you want to say, what's the overall average response rate, you're gonna to have to use approach to and calculate this weighted average. All right, so that's the general idea on how to approach this weighted average situation. Now let's apply this to the entire responses data set. So I'm gonna go back to the responses tab here, and you can see here that I have all my release periods and completed surveys and response rates. Now for 2015, the completed survey values are actually not numeric. They're all 300 or more, between 100 and 200 and so on. So I'm just gonna ignore those, and that's fine if I don't have one year's worth of data in my data set. And then also in completed surveys, you'll notice that there are some other non-numeric fields. So I'm just gonna filter those out for now. Right now here, I have 3,800 rows of data. If I were to filter out everything that wasn't numeric, so I'm gonna filter out these two. Then I have 3,200 rows, which is still many, many rows of data. And then I'm gonna do the same with this column. So I'm going to scroll all the way down and uncheck not available. And I have 32,000 columns, which looks great. So I'm gonna take all this data right here and I'm gonna copy it into my calculation tab. So here I've pasted all the data from that tab that is numeric so I can make my calculations. Okay, from this, the first thing we have to do is calculate surveys given. 
So if you remember from before, this is where fraction math comes in again. So in this row, I would do 28 divided by 100, and that is my fraction for the response rate. And I want that to be equal to completed surveys divided by surveys given. So I'm gonna do completed surveys, which is 1305. And then I'm trying to figure out surveys given. So to do the math here, I would do 100 times 1305 divided by 28. So I'm gonna do 100 times 1305 divided by 28. And that was a total number of surveys given. So just to confirm that, if I do surveys given times 28%, so times 0 0.28, then I get 1305, which is the completed surveys. Okay, so that is the correct value. I'm gonna double click here and it populates all the cells below. Okay, so next let's calculate the weight. To do that, I'm going to multiply our response rate, which is what we're trying to find the average of, times the number of surveys given, because that's how much weight I'm gonna give to that response. The more surveys given, the more weight. So I'm gonna multiply them, and then again, double click to fill in the rest of the cells. Okay, so from here, I've created a pivot table. So I just highlighted that top cell, and then I did insert pivot table, and then I inserted a pivot table right here. And from here, the first thing I'm gonna do is just refresh the data in here. And now from here, I can start adding to my pivot table. So I'm gonna add release period, and I have everything except for 2016. And then I'm gonna pull in surveys given and also my weighted calculation. So now from here, I'm just gonna copy this down here. What I can do is calculate that average. And to do that, I'm gonna take the sum of all the weights and divide it by the sum of the surveys that were given. And then here are my percentages. 27% all the way down to 19%. So I'm gonna copy these and then I can paste them in this comparison tab right here. And you see here are all my weighted averages. And if you compare them with the unweighted averages, you see that these here unweighted are a little bit higher. If you were to plot the two different results, you can see here on this plot as time goes on, both the unweighted and weighted results go down, but the weighted results are lower. And that is the correct average response rate. And again, just to summarize everything we covered here in our last Maven Healthcare Challenge, a lot of you asked the question, how did the average response rate change over time? And the majority of challenge submissions made a mistake when they made this calculation. So the key takeaway is beware when you're taking the average of percentages and just make sure you take the weighted average instead. I hope you remember going forward to not make this weighted average mistake. Again, my name is Alice Zhao from Maven Analytics, and I hope to see you again soon.